All right, before we do some more coding, I need to do some background information. So you may have heard the term before that the web is a stateless protocol. And you can go up and search online, and if you do, there's all kinds of links that talk about what a stateless protocol is and, and what it is, including this Wikipedia web page here. But I, I want to try to explain it uh, just in case you uh, haven't heard uh, this idea before. So what we have, uh, and we already know this, is if we've got our machine right here, right, and we've got you know, our fancy little keyboard here, and it's sending some sort of request to a server. And so let's draw this a little bit differently here. The request is, is going to be such that this request, so let's, let's make sure we, we label this properly here. This is a request. And that request is going to happen. The server is going to process it. And then what's going to come back is some sort of response. And that is the basic idea of HTTP. Now what the idea of stateless is is, is that these re requests and responses are going to happen over and over and over. There's this uh, circular nature of these. And a request is independent of any other request. So uh, the server doesn't have to keep track of uh, some sort of communication that we've been doing. Um, you know, think about if you were purchasing something on the web that was stateful. You'd have to remember who that person was. Uh, did they tell you the credit card information right now? Um, how much um, things have they put in their shopping cart? And you might be asking yourself, but isn't that exactly how I use the, the web right now? And um, yes, with, with a little bit of a hack, and that's why this is, is coming up. But in general, this server doesn't know anything about a previous request, nor does it um, try to keep information. And there are very good reasons for this. Let's say something happens where this machine dies. You know, if you, you get disconnected from Wi-Fi, you lose your battery, um, your dog spills water on your computer, whatever the reason is. If that happens, this server doesn't know that necessarily. And so it has to keep around some extra state. And so let's uh, say that here. I'm putting it in red because this is bad state. It's state for that red computer that we don't want anymore. And this can happen enough, especially on a big website, that this state for not just this broken computer, but a bunch of broken computers over time can build up and use a lot of uh, memory space or, or disk space that we don't necessarily want. Uh, so, so that's bad. Let's, let's undo that. Uh, and what happens in, in the other si situation? Let's say, let's make sure we got a red pin here. Uh, let's say the server goes down. Well, then when the, the server comes back up and is trying to reboot and restore what state it had, it has to remember somehow the middle of the request because the next request that comes from the client, the client's not going to know that this server broke down and it's going to assume that the server already knew what was going on previously and doesn't remember that information. And so this can be very hard to do to have some sort of, of state on the server and recover from that uh, a crash or breaking down uh, because the client doesn't know about it. So, so that is, is also bad. But let's uh, think of a, a second situation. This is going to be very common in, in the web. What if you have more than one server, right? Uh, because you've got a big website. And so request one goes to this server, but then request two, we'll, we'll write that in here. Uh, if I can spell correctly, let's undo that. All right, E-S-T. 
the request to comes to this server and the response comes back and you can think of big places like Google and, and Amazon having this kind of infrastructure in, in place. Now what does that mean? If, if there was state, if there was a remembering of what the conversation was between these computers, now somewhere in the background that means that there has to be some sort of uh, coordination that goes on between these two computers so that that state can be communicated and the client doesn't have to know that it communicates with this one and then it switches over to communicating with that one. Otherwise, this machine is required to keep on communicating back with this computer. In other words, it needs to have, um, so this would be an OR, there needs to be a common link where this computer is guaranteed that it's going to connect with this server. And so if that happens, then you have a bunch of um, these, these links not connecting to one client, but a bunch of clients, and that's a different kind of resource that this computer has to keep open. Just like the bad state we had earlier, that is, is very problematic. And, and so we, we don't want to have to do that if, if we don't need to. And so the stateless information allows us to what, do what's called scaling or greatly increasing the, the number of clients that can connect to a computer because we don't have to keep track of um, state and use up memory and disk space to do that. And we can grow the number of our servers as we need for additional client requests and there doesn't have to be this additional communication line going in between them. We can tolerate clients breaking down, we can client tolerate servers breaking down, and the process goes on just like it's supposed to. And so in an ideal uh, situation with uh, stateless communication, which is uh, the world of, of HTTP that, that we live in, uh, we, we get a, a lot of benefits from it. Um, and so that's what we mean when we say the web is stateless. However, I gave an example of, of purchasing things on the web and there, there seems to be some sort of, of memory. There seems to be some sort of, of state that goes on. How can that be? Well, we'll answer that in our next episode.